Hey, and welcome back to Damn Parenting, the one and only English-speaking parenting podcast from the Netherlands. We're taking a brief break from recording to recharge, but fear not, exciting things are in store for August. We'll be returning with a lineup of fantastic episodes that we can't wait to share with you. But don't worry, we won't leave you without something to listen to. We've carefully selected some of our most loved episodes inspired by your listens, heartwarming messages on Instagram and email, and those wonderful conversations we've had when we've bumped into you around the city. Today's episode on Dan Chats, we're diving into... The the always important topic of bedtime with our little and not so little ones. Joining us on this episode was the delightful Zayanya from Adapting to Love. We'll take you behind the closed bedroom doors of our own families, sharing supportive and encouraging stories about how each of us manages bedtime in our own unique way. We hope this episode not only brings a smile to your face, but also fills your heart with warmth and support. Enjoy! Welcome back to another episode of Damn Parenting, your English-speaking parenting podcast from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And as always, we are your hosts, Eva and Marin. Today we have a damn chat session and we have the wonderful Zayanya from Adapting to Love. Hi, Zayanya. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. The reason we wanted you to get on here was because you put out a story a while ago. I think I just messaged you as quickly as possible when I saw it. And I was like, girl, can you come on Damn Chats? Because I really want to talk about that post you just done. Because it resonated so much with me. And I felt like, especially because it was on social media, it was an insight into someone's life. But normally the insights we get are, oh, this is perfect. But you were sharing <laughs> something quite intimate and quite unexpected, maybe for so many people. And so I really wanted to kind of just touch on that and for us to kind of have this honest conversation to just to say, hey, look, this is the real life. This is behind the camera. This is off camera. This is how we actually do it. And that post was a post you had showing how you were putting your kids to sleep. Would you right. like to elaborate? Yeah. So sometimes I see from accounts I do admire with this type of honest, I had written along with a video from someone else showing that instead of struggling to get the baby or your toddler or your child to sleep at night by saying, go to bed, go to bed, get your pajamas on, and that that creates often a conflict because there is going to be a separation. I was sharing that we as the video was kind of encouraging that we also lay with our children until they're asleep every night. And we've been doing that for over seven years. So it started with my youngest and we would alternate my husband and I doing bedtime with him. But now that we have two kids, we alternate with the kids, which means that both of us lay with our kids until they're asleep every night. I don't find it remarkable personally, but when I share things like this, I inevitably get quite a few responses. And a lot of them are like, oh, we do this too. It's so nice with like an emoji. Shh. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. Like, really? Like They're like confessing to me that they love okay. to play with their kids until they're yeah. asleep. But like, don't tell anyone because then you're going to hear like these comments of like, oh, but it takes so long or, oh, but is your kid going to be able to go to sleep on their own? Can you ever go out? You know, it's it just, I think as parents, it trickles very quickly our, um, our thoughts to like, it escalates to like, oh, but next year and then the next year and then the next year. And when is it going to change? And I think we forget that when we have a bad habit or a good habit, it doesn't mean it's forever because our children are growing. And we can also always change our boundaries at any point when we need to. So for us, it works really well. We like it. And we like that our kids are not fighting with us to get into bed. They look forward to it. I mean, it's still like, oh my God, can you put your pajamas on sometimes? Because they're just distracted. But it's not them having usually like tantrums or really trying to get out of the bedroom and then we get in bed and we read stories together we turn the lights off and we talk a little or sing um my oldest always just goes off on these random philosophical questions that i guess have been building up throughout the day <laughs> we always have to be after like 10 minutes of that be like okay Ram, that's you. <laughs> you gotta stop. He's like, but I have so many more questions. I'm like, yep, yeah, you're gonna have to save them for breakfast. And he's like, I never remember them for breakfast. And I'm like, sorry, kid, at some point you gotta stop. But then uh, 
I usually, we usually fall asleep before they do. I, we just like conk out and then usually like kind of wake up 10 minutes later and they're asleep and we climb out of bed. And that's it. That's our routine. And it, I guess I want to add that it, it's not a problem. If I'm out of the house, a tish can put them both to sleep. And that often means that our oldest, who is seven, just kind of, they read all together and then Rem will just put himself to sleep. If we have a babysitter or grandparents, that's fine. They just put themselves to sleep with a little bit like maybe the babysitter like sits with them for a minute and tucks them in but then they're fine with them leaving yeah it's it's not something they're dependent on because they've grown it's just a habit that we enjoy see to me that's, that's nice just like yeah a time for connection right so you can yeah. have that anytime some people have that dinner time some people have that whenever when they ride to school whatever and you chose that time for connections yeah it's we we try to make other times for connection like dinner but it doesn't always yeah, work yeah, yeah. um yeah. our kids don't love to eat <laughs> and I've, I've it's often like eat your food eat your food we play games yeah. and stuff at dinner time to try to keep it light but yeah that it, it is it's a time that is really nice for that and It doesn't always take that long either. The responses I got were sometimes, yeah, people saying, oh, we do this too. And then I also got a few people saying, people that I know sometimes struggle with their children waking up at night or needing other types of support. I had a few people saying like, mm, maybe I should do that with my kids too, but dot, dot, dot. So it kind of felt sometimes like they're asking permission to like, is this something that I should be making time for or like maybe they need someone to tell them that they should really be doing that, which is not my 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 job. But yeah, it is interesting to see how we hold ourselves back from make that space, especially around bedtime. I think people are so afraid to not have independent sleepers. That's true. And especially when you've gone out of the baby era into the toddler hood and, you know, you've already been through a few years of never knowing if they're going to sleep through six hour patches or whatever it might be. One of the things you were actually just saying there is like people might be asking permission. For me personally, it was a case of what does my daughter need? And then I was just thinking, well, I think this is what I, she needs. And so I was listening to it. And I always just see on social media, those people who are like, oh, you know, look at my child and they're off putting their own PJs on and brushing their own teeth and they're happy to get into their own bed. And I'm like, well, my, my daughter's not like that. And, and for me, it's just another element of if they're having a tantrum or if they're having their whatever it could be, it's an emotional period. And it's just that thing that it's a case of, well, what is it that they need right now? And all I know is if you walked me into a bedroom, read a story and said, okay, good night and walked off, I'd be kind of left I guess, a little bit wondering like, okay, well, this isn't great. And so it's just a secret comfort, I guess, that, you know, we can give them. And one thing I did see somewhere was there's six very important minutes in child's day. The first two minutes of connection, first start, the start of the day, two minutes after school and the last two minutes, you know, a bedtime kind of thing. And I guess our two minutes ends up being an hour <laughs> or however long it may be in that moment. But it's, it's, uh, it's also one of those things I believe in. You never know when your last time will be. And it's never going to be forever. And so yeah. I just really like that's why I really wanted to get you on the episode, having seen that story, because I was like, yes, preach, you know, say it, like show it and, you know, show the other side. And as you say, you do have a life and you do go out and you do go away and you do, you know, you can do this because your children know because they have that security already that they're, they know we get this 95 percent of the time. But, you know, it's also important for mommy and daddy to also have a relationship. And there's another way that we'll be put to bed as well. And so it's it's just really yeah. nice. Yeah. And I mean, I agree with you about the security part. I think that regardless of the relationship people have with their kids, often kids just understand different caregivers. And I think that's something that I, I see missing a lot in my work as a postpartum educator and working with families with as a baby wearing consultant. People are like, oh, but if I wear them too much, then I can't send them to daycare. And if I don't sleep train, they can't go to daycare. And if I'm breastfeeding, they can't go to daycare. And if I lay with them to sleep, then we can't use a babysitter. And if this and if this, and we just have to remember that like our children are far more complete creatures creatures or people than this and they are able to from very young differentiate between different caregivers and this also translates to different parents right between moms and dads and there's so many times that moms will often protect 
how they do something and they want the dad to do it the exact same way. But actually, it's totally fine for another parent to do bedtime in a completely different way. Children really adapt and they can feel safe and cared for in different ways with different caregivers. And that's why like what your boundaries are can be different from someone else's and laying with my kids until they're asleep doesn't keep us from letting them fall asleep in other ways and other places and with other people. I do like it too, because when we travel, I think that helps too with how they adjust to different environments that like there's always that continuity of of us being in bed with them until they're asleep. And I mean, honestly, my four year old, he just turned four, he still gets in bed with us every night <laughs> at 2am or such, but it's changing, like it's shifting, I can feel like some mornings, he's not coming in bed till 630. Some mornings he sleeps in his bed the whole, like we wake up and he never made it into our bed now. So that's shifting. But yeah, Rem is seven and and we still do it. And I do feel like the end of days coming, you know, there's times where I'm laying there and he's like, oh, can you scoot over? Like, stop doing that with a blanket and I'm like do you want me to stay or do you want me to go and he's like I don't know <laughs> and I'm like oh, oh no so it, it I think in some ways it's coming but also I just had a walk with my friend Isabel who I believe you two know this morning and mentioned our talk today and she was like tell them that Paloma and I still cuddle every night and I lay with her until she's asleep and she's 10 and that's like a really, really important part of their relationship and their day. And they both do it because they love it. And and that's the other thing is like, right, like parents shouldn't do it necessarily out of a f- sense of obligation, but maybe be open to like, if you're going to do this, like you said, you you recognize the need in your child, you did it for them. But maybe then also you realize that you you like it, like that it gives you back something too, right? Those cuddles and that chill, like for me, it's one of the only times in the day that I'm not like trying to accomplish 10 things in my mind or in tasks and on my phone and stuff. So I think that's which is probably why I often fall asleep. It's that time where they're not moving and you can actually admire them. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I I also totally agree with what you said about that. They adapt to their environment so yeah. much. And we, I see exactly the same thing. My daughter knows who she's with and what the rules and boundaries are. There is certain rules and boundaries that are applicable with everyone because that's the baseline that we roll with. But then she is, she very much understands what she gets from what person and what the relationship looks like. So yeah, I totally agree with that. And also, I think the more we can also be flexible with this whole topic as like you really like lay there and wait and like all that. And that's this is one one way how this can look like. It can also look like I'm sitting with you, but I'm reading my book or I'm listening to a podcast. I'm here, but I can also do something else. So this is also what I want to say that a lot of times people think I lie with my child equals we're all in a dark room. I have to lie. I cannot move. I can. This is the only way it can happen. And I cannot picture that. But being with your child and like helping them fall asleep can have many different ways how that looks. And I think that is also important for people to understand. It's not lying there in a dark room and I can't move and the other extreme is I shut the door and say goodbye see you so that's also yeah and that's that's a great point because like we have it pretty good in the sense that both of our kids fall asleep within 20 minutes sometimes within 10 minutes so that's that's not forever but there are kids that take like an hour tossing and turning to unwind and I can understand why you would not want to lay there for an hour and maybe you develop a routine of like I'm going to lay with you for 20 minutes and then I'm going to be outside doing my work and if you need me come get me or maybe you say I'm going to sit next to the bed and do some work while you're falling asleep or I'm going to read a book or something to try to make that time more useful for you because we're all busy and I get that there was actually I do like this weekly anonymous questions and I get really random like different different topic questions. And I had a very sweet one from a father who said my baby, I think the child was, I want to say like nine months or so, had to hold his finger for her to fall asleep, but that he couldn't remove his finger until she was past a certain point 
of like depth in her sleep and that it often took over 20 minutes. And he was saying, how can I change this? And I think his question was, how can I change this habit for her? And that's how I initially started answering it. I was like, you could try to use a lovey. You could hold her hand so you can more easily remove it rather than her holding your hand. And then I uh, suddenly reframed it in my head. And I was like, but wait a minute, like this is super adorable. And it's only 20 minutes. And also one thing I think we forget as parents when we feel inconvenient over and over and over again is to use our adult mind and instead of saying oh why do they do this every time we can take a step into the future and say this is going to happen like I know that this is going to happen because mm-hmm. this is a predictable behavior how can I better regulate or make use of this like if this is going to happen then i'm going to take away the stimulus that would cause it to happen or i'm going to in this case it's not a stimulus and it's not a bad behavior i'm going to make use of the time and so i suggested maybe you can queue up some emails or material for work that you need to read throughout the day and save it because you know you're going to have those 20 minutes and you can scroll on your phone or maybe there's a podcast you try to listen to every day and you can save it for those 20 minutes. So I don't, it was an anonymous question. So I don't know how that ended up working out, but I'd like to know. I'm curious. Well, for me, I can definitely admit that I think I was the only one who put my daughter to bed until she was nearly two and a half. That was my thing every single night. And uh, we only changed it because I was kind of getting like, whoa, what's happening here? But the honest, the honest thing was like there was sometimes I was holding her hand for an hour and it was also a case of not just holding hands, but then she would turn, put my hand underneath her and it was a real like, I'm never getting free. In my head, it was also a case of I was totally inconvenienced. My arm was like twisted over and around the bed and it was just like absolutely painstaking. But it was just that thing of if this is what you need to get you to sleep, because I, I am really bad at getting to sleep as an adult. I am really bad at getting to sleep as an adult. But the fact that this one thing comforts her and she goes to sleep and it works every night and the fact we built up this whole routine for now all these years I know she needs this and I know she's asleep and that's it and it's done and it's not going to be forever yeah as, as you preach and the thing is I, I like it too and I know what's happening and it is part of my routine and this is this is how it is and it's not a bad thing it's it's not no I there, there doesn't have to be any bad part of it unless if we choose to hate it I guess <laughs> God, I hope no one hates putting their kids to bed to be honest like that's that's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's that. Perhaps I think it's just that we we judge ourselves for it. We view it as a a weakness of like, oh, I'm such a sucker or oh, my child needs this independent skill. And if we can just reframe that for ourselves, then yeah, we can accept it and enjoy it. And and, or the worst thing, kids are manipulators. Yeah, (laughs) that's a hard one. Yeah, they They don't even know where their own nose is. (laughs) (laughs) I know they they just want us. I think that's like fundamentally clear to me seven years in is how much they just need to connect with us often. Yeah, which is humankind, right? Yeah, it is. That's just down to basic biology of the world. Yeah. Okay, well, we're not curing anything, but we are so thankful that you joined us. And we really hope that people listening in are not going to feel like they're being manipulated or, oh, God, I have to do this. But the fact that they might reframe it, as you suggest, and they might mm. kind of say, this is part of my routine. You know, this is part of bedtime. And we're all being honest and we're all saying, this is kind of what yeah. we do. You lie in bed. I can't fit into my daughter's bed. Mm. Thankfully, we haven't reached that one. But we all do different things. And hopefully the person who admitted to you and then said, Shh, you know, the emotional emoji yeah <laughs> hopefully they're not going to be silent and that they might also admit that hey yeah. yeah i do this and i do look forward to having a big enough bed that i can climb into my daughter's bed so hopefully sh- i'll start annoying her instead of her coming into my bed every other night so yeah and a floor bed is great for that too true yeah yeah because then i won't be pushed off the bed and landing on my own yeah mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and uh yeah. hopefully uh yeah we'll get a few responses to see how many people are going to be honest about holding their hands climbing into bed, sitting yeah. down, and even like the great tips that you said about like just filing up those emails or the podcast, as Myron was saying, or whatever it might be that there's all these different kind of other options that if you feel like, well, they're not doing anything and I could kind of, you know, catch up with something, you know, don't feel guilty about it. Totally. Yeah. And also what you said about the predictability, like accept the fact. So let's change the, the modalities that we can change. If we can change the fact that yeah. this is going to happen. Totally. Be flexible. Well, with that, we're going to round it up. And that's 
a damn chat that comes out every Monday. Every Wednesday, we have an expert episode coming out on this podcast. You can catch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And we're excited to hear you on the next episode, either Wednesdays with the experts or Mondays for a chat. Till next time. Bye.